Hello and welcome back to A Squirrel Plays. Today we'll be visiting the land of TTRPGs and talking about player character death. Oh ho ho ho, yes, sweet player death. But to be more specific, we will be talking about player character death within Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. And if you're thinking that's because I want yet another reason to dunk on 5e, no. I promise you it's not. I've seen a few memes and tweets lately about some supposed controversy within the community about whether or not player characters should be allowed to die in a game of 5e. I don't know how big the controversy is, or was, at this point, but really, I don't think it matters too much because I think it'd still be a fun thing to talk about. And before I get into it, I would like to say that this controversy probably only exists because of how much 5e spoils its players with the sheer amount of power that they're given. Now, you've heard me complain about that enough, so I won't get into it, but I will say that this supposed controversy is kind of my point in that regard. If players weren't constantly handed so much power, they wouldn't think they're strong enough to take on literal gods and do what they want. They've been spoiled so much that they're legitimately shocked that they can actually die in the game. Who would have guessed that their actions might have consequences one day? But that's enough of that. Let's actually open up the table for everyone else here and dig into it. And if you're here looking for a solution to the problem, well, let me get that out of the way first. Session zero, my dudes. I can't recommend it enough. Before your campaign starts, before you start rolling any stats or even thinking of a character to play, get together and discuss what you're expecting out of that game. Talk about the things you don't want or can't handle. If you do that, you won't have this problem. You can tell people on the front end you're looking for a game that you can't die in. Or, if you're on the other side of the fence, you can tell everyone you're trying to find a game where actions have consequences and you have to be careful what you do, else you might end up at the bottom of a spike pit. Now how about that? Easy enough, right? Just talk about what you do and don't want. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what's on both sides of the fence. Let's start with the side that doesn't want their character to be able to die. What might be some pros and cons to that type of play? Some advantages and disadvantages, if you will, or at least from my point of view. Because I'm a grumpy old squirrel, the first thing that comes to my mind is a lack of responsibility. And by that, I mean if they can't die, then several of their actions won't have consequences. So in turn, they'll probably act or play irresponsibly. You could add another line under that one that says it encourages dumb decisions. After all, if you can't die, why not just stab the king you know is guilty instead of trying to prove it? Who's going to stop you? Now let's try something positive. I like it when characters have a good backstory. I would also like to clarify that a good backstory does not mean a long backstory. A good backstory is one that fits the current setting and allows you plenty of room to grow. And with that being said, that might be another video I need to make. But getting back on track, if a player knows there is danger around every corner and that death is a very real option, they might not feel so inclined to spend much effort on their backstory. Why bother if the character is just going to die in a couple sessions anyway, right? On the other hand, if they know this character will never leave them and they'll be able to play them through to the very end of the story, they might be a bit more inclined to put a little more care and thought into their character. After all, they're going to be stuck with them for a while. So we'll mark this as encourages, maybe, player to put more effort into character story. Another positive thing from not dying, you know, other than living, is that it could also prevent some ill feelings between the players and the GM. Sometimes when the big dragon singles you out, you can feel a little personally attacked. Maybe you take it the wrong way, or hey, maybe the GM actually didn't like your character. Maybe there's really nothing there, but you feel like there is. If you never died, you wouldn't be having those thoughts. And in a similar vein, losing your character can be discouraging. If you can't die, you won't get discouraged from that game over moment. You won't ever lose that thing that you spent time creating. Though I will go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Even if the character you make dies in that adventure, he or she is far from dead. There's no reason whatsoever you can't take the same character over into another adventure at another time. Still, I can completely understand how discouraging it is to lose that character in that specific adventure you're currently in. 
And sometimes that's enough for people to step away. Whether that's permanent or not is irrelevant to the current conversation. So with those listed, I would ask the following question. If you can't die, why even bother with the combat? If I knew I was invincible, combat would get really boring really fast. Though I know for a fact there are people out there that would be completely fine with this. It's just whatever floats your boat. You just got to make sure all your boat floaters are at the same table. Now let's look at the other side. Let's have a look at the ones who are actually mortal. What are the pros and cons of being able to die? For starters, it's a great way to get out of going to work, but I guess that doesn't really apply here. The first game-related positive I can think of is the feeling of accomplishment. Not to be confused with EA's sense of pride and accomplishment. <laughs> when you know you're able to die and that there's a chance you might not make it, each success actually feels like one. Those close calls can be really exciting and get the blood flowing. The level ups are also far more exciting, as they will provide you with more tools to stay alive and keep the looming death just a little bit farther away. And at the same time, it also means you'll be heading off to fight even bigger challenges, which will loop you back through the feeling of accomplishment. Each step of growth will increase that feeling with the sense of accomplishment becoming bigger and bigger each time. Being mortal also means your decisions matter. The tools you decide to bring with you on your adventure, the skills you pick, the spells you learn, all of that suddenly has a much bigger impact as they will play a huge factor in whether or not you survive the adventure. So what are the downsides? Well, we kind of touched on that already, with the biggest one being players getting discouraged when they eventually die. Another thing about player character mortality is that if a player did put a lot of effort into the character creation as far as story goes and whatnot, the constant looming death might stress them out too much to be able to enjoy the game. And since the whole point of the game is to have fun, that kind of defeats the purpose. And again, as mentioned before, if the player feels there is a good chance their character is going to die, they might not bother putting much effort into their backstory. Or at least, they could be more inclined to make a joke character, and will just kill them off if it doesn't work out. And at this point, some of you might be wondering, well, which one's better? It might come as no surprise to you whatsoever, but the answer is, neither one of them is better. What makes for a better game is entirely subjective. If you watch some of my earlier videos complaining about how much power 5e gives players, you would probably assume that I very much lean towards the side of killing the players. And to be completely fair, I think it would be a safe assumption to make. However, I actually try very, very hard to keep my players alive. Yes, they can die, but it takes some doing. The only way they can die, usually, is if they do something incredibly stupid or they have a very unfortunate string of bad luck. In other words, if they die, it was well earned. Now, why do I try so hard to keep them alive? Because as the GM, I appreciate good character backstories. If I'm constantly killing players, they won't bring that to the table for me. I also appreciate a good overall story and watching the characters grow through their stories. Again, if I'm constantly killing them off, that doesn't get to happen. That said, a good character death can play a vital role in the story. It can be a defining moment for the entire campaign. It can set other characters off on their arcs. It can be their rising moment, or it can be their downfall where it all went wrong. When deaths are rare and well-earned, it's easier to take advantage of the moment and get more out of it. If player characters are dying left and right, well, it's not that special anymore. I'm largely story-driven, in case you haven't figured it out, so I sit somewhere in the middle of this argument. The players are the main characters of the story, but if you've read anything of mine, you'd know darn good and well that doesn't mean they're safe. If anything, death might be a welcome relief. Just ask the poor saps from my first campaign. But to be only slightly more serious, and you've probably already figured this out by now, is that the only right way to play the game is to have fun. Do you find immortal player characters annoying? Do you think it's stupid and a waste of time? Well, that's perfectly fine. Now go find you a group of people that feel the same way so you can make what you feel to be an awesome game. Make it gritty and dangerous as you want with death at every corner. Lord knows there's some video games out there that I love cranking up to the hardest difficulty possible and then some.
Man, this game hard as fuck. If you enjoy a more relaxed, easygoing game where you don't have to worry about much and can just chill with your buds, then find you some friends who feel the same way and make some superheroes. Heck, start at level 10 and go nuts. Have yourself a good old time because that's the whole point. I mean, come on. Isn't that what I'm always saying at the end of my videos anyway? Stay safe, have fun, because that's the most important part of the game? Not yet, it! hold your horses, I'm not finished yet. I would like to reiterate that the point is to enjoy yourselves and play with those who have similar tastes. How you have fun is how you have fun. There is no right or wrong way, despite what some people might tell you. It also doesn't mean you have to stop being friends with other people or anything. It just means there's some games you can't play together, and that's perfectly fine. This is supposed to be a hobby, and hobbies are meant to be enjoyed. It's what you do to relieve stress and tension in your life, not add to it. And I'm absolutely preaching to myself on that one. Now, on to the shout-out. Today's shout-out goes to... Well, a lot of you, really. Our friend Old Grognard says posted a video a little while back that caught the algorithm's attention, and he just so happened to give me a shout-out at the end of it. And because of that, my subscriber count took a little bit of a jump. Some of you commented on my channel introduction video that you came from Old Grognard's channel, so many thanks for that and welcome aboard. Special mention for Katie Did because she used to raise baby squirrels, and of course, that's a foolproof way to win brownie points for me, but also to Mythman58. Look, man, you can't just mention that you paint minis and not share pictures. It's illegal. And that's it. The table is open and the discussion has been passed to you. Where do you stand on player mortality? Do you prefer games so dangerous that the players might die if the wind blows the wrong way? Or do you prefer them to take on world-ending monsters with little to fear? Or are you like me and you're somewhere in the middle? And also, what have you witnessed at your table as far as player mortality goes and behavior? Share your thoughts in the comments below and remember to stay safe and actually, you know what? I already said that, so I'm not doing it again.